Okay, everybody, welcome to my desk. You guys are going to love this one. So I'm um, a couple minutes early. We're just going to wait till everyone gets their notification that we've started. Um, and let's see who is around. Julie, hello. Uh, Wanda. Ronog, hi, Ronog. I'm waving. Wait a minute. I'll be able to show you that in a sec. Rose says, hey, Sue and gang from Meridian. Hello. Montreal, Canada. Bonjour, Sophie. Uh, Pixie Puppet made it. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. And, oh, Cindy King. Hi, Cindy King. I'm going to show you guys how I work, like my work routine and what I do. It's, it's different. I'm going to show you all my tools and explain them. And um, then... We're going to start doing some digitizing classes. Hi, Karina. Hello. Everyone can hear me, obviously, right? Yeah, I'm sure. So another minute. We'll give everyone another minute to start before we start. So what I'm going to show you right here is the surprise for today. And that is this right there. Look. You guys can see me, my hand. So, hi, can hear you. Thanks, Rose. I figured that. So this right here is my Cintiq. It's a Wacom uh, Cintiq. And this is basically what I use for my digitizing. So you can see the actual screenshot bigger, uh, but you can see what I'm doing here. So uh, it's... Um, it's so nice to have a Sue day. Yay! <laughs> it's fun. Um, Sharon says, from Liberty Center, Ohio. Need to learn this. Well, this is just kind of an introduction to my desk. Now, up here, right up there, I have a widescreen monitor. And this is just kind of butted up to it. Um, so that's my setup for it. Obviously, now I have a camera up here. Hello, hello. Um, and everything else. But that's what I have. And my keyboard is down here in a drawer. So it's a pullout so you can use it. So let's start off with what kind of mouse I use. This is my absolute favorite mouse ever. And it is a Logitech. And it's different. This is how you hold it and you use it. So the mouse keys buttons are right here. And I found that this has completely eliminated my um, strain on my wrist. So I love this guy. He's awesome. There's a big one and the small one. The big one I found was too big. So Don got that one. Um, and this one is smaller. So make sure it's called a lift. So make sure you get the right one. So that's what I use for mousing. The rest of the time, I use my Wacom. I think everyone says it's supposed to say Wacom, but uh, pronounce Wacom, but I'm going to say Wacom. So just know what I'm talking about. And this will replace your mouse. You can use both if you want but this will replace your mouse. So what does that mean? That means that anytime, see how I picked up, oh, I keep forgetting why, why is the arrow so small? But I picked it up once I brought it near to it and I picked it up and you can click on any buttons that you want. So I just clicked on the style stitch or steel stitch, whatever you want to say. Now, I'll show you my shortcut things, but for now, I'm just going to hit enter. And see, it's the same thing. Now you go back, and I do have shortcuts for all of this. And see how you can just move it? So pick a screen and watch it. You can see things clearly on it. If you need to go through this menu, you can do it. So anything you can click your mouse on, you can do. And I just have mine at an angle. You can't really see it, but the front end here is raised up a little bit. 
and if I push my keyboard in, I can tuck right in and it is actually super comfortable and I can see. Now this is a new Cintiq. I had to get one because my old guy wouldn't work with Windows 11. So I had to get a new one. Hi, Chris Yost. Hello. I had to get a new one. So it's a, I don't know, 22 or 24, one of those. Um, and it comes with this cool shortcut thing. So I can't remember what it's called, but I thought it sounded funny. So I called it uh, Eek. So this is my Eek for shortcuts. I'm just getting used to this guy and you turn it on. There's three different levels. This will zoom. Do you see that? How cool is that? It works really well in PEP software. So that is super handy because you don't have to, you know, click on any of the zoom um, buttons or anything. And enter is right here. And I've got all the alt shift keys set up. Um, but if you click the inner button, you can program different things for this to use for it. Now I found it's really super handy. I like it. I'm just getting used to all the buttons. I think I have save, save as, enter, delete, ones like that, whatever you use the most. The other nice thing about this is that it's, um, slightly magnetic so I put it on, you can put it actually anywhere you want and it'll stay. So if you're working on something very intently, this can be your working position. So I like it. Right now I keep it on the outside bevel and I'm going to turn it off so I don't ac accidentally do it. But it is, it came with this one and it is meant for it. Now, another one that I use, now this right now, I use this one upstairs on my laptop. So this is a different brand. This is Huion and it just comes with the buttons and I took a Sharpie and I marked the ones that I use, which, you know, it's pretty cool. It helps. Uh, you can see I use some buttons more than other, but you know, it's handy and it's easy to do. The buttons are close by. The only thing is I couldn't get this to work. I couldn't get the dial to work. So meh, it's a little bit annoying. Um, this one was way less expensive than I'm sure the uh, Wacom one does, but the Wacom one has more shortcuts. So um, Judy Quill Ty just got back from golf and grocery shopping. Well, grocery shopping isn't that exciting, but maybe golf is for sure, for sure. Um, so Judy Quilt, I was, can you change the view? Want to see you in the big screen? Me? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe one day, but not right now. Um, it, it took me forever to set up the camera right there so you wouldn't get any reflections from the Cintiq. So, yeah. So this one I do like. I use it upstairs with my laptop because I'm really used to the shortcuts. My hands. Oh, you want it bigger? You want it switched. Is that what you're saying? Huh? That might be an idea. Um don't know how to do it. So if you hold on, does everybody else want that too? The bigger picture up? I'm sure. I don't know. I'll have to do it next time, Karina. Sarah, finally catching alive. Um, yeah, I don't quite know how to do it offhand um, to make it bigger, but... Um, yeah, can I set it? Next time, I will. Okay. I didn't realize I asked Don about it, and he said, oh, that's fine. But you're right, I think, seeing the whole thing. But I also just wanted to show off stuff. We're not going to be doing any actual work, so this gives you an overview of everything. So your pen is your mouse. You can do anything you want with it. Um, there are two buttons. And, uh, I have them both sent to the same, um, 
the same one because I click them by accident all the time and it's the right click. Um, do you guys want me to try to fix it? I really honestly don't know if I can change the whole setup mid. If you will uh, chat amongst yourselves momentarily, I'll see. Let's see. So I don't know if it'll do it live. So I'll have to see. Just give me a sec. I think because I have the whole display captured, I don't think it's going to make it smaller. Yeah, I don't. Maybe though. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it's the entire display. No, no, I can't change it. I will for next time though. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I was hoping I could make the window bigger. Let me try if I can do that. Just hold on. Uh, na na configure. Yeah, nope, not gonna. Nope, obviously you can't do it once you start. So apologies for that. Next time I will switch them around. So back to the pen. So I have both programs, so I don't have to worry about which one I'm hitting because I my nails often get in the way and I just kind of do the wrong thing. So you could see the button there pretty well. So these are my main tools. And again, you can use your pen uh, as the mouse and it, it's exactly the same. Now, if you want to use the mouse, that's that's fine too. So let's change this to the 3D. Isn't this a beautiful design? And we should probably get rid of this, but we can move it around. I am going to be doing classes with this format, except for, of course, I'll be changing stuff around. And um, just to, you know, make it easier. But isn't that cool? So you can zoom. Now, I don't have a touch one because I find it really annoying. You can get palm rejection. So like when you're going like this, but I find I just, I kind of hit the screen too often. So I don't go for the touch screen. You can turn it off and on and the whole bit, but you know, it's, I don't like it. So I don't get it. So this is beautiful. You can see your stitches. You can do everything you want. By the way, this is a 4K monitor. It's probably not showing up that way for you guys, but I really like it because the everything you see is awesome. It is nice and clear. So out of this software, you can use any software. So save design one, design two, no. I'm gonna bring up my Wilcom and I'm gonna show you guys, Wilcom has this button right here up on the left and it is freehand. So when I'm telling you guys that I did the quilting freehand, this is what I'm doing. So I can set everything up like that. So say that's a, a quilting thing here. Oh, it is on 3D. Oh, maybe a, a different color. Let's take that off. So you can just mosey around and do everything that you need to. Let's change this. There we go. Now you guys can really see it. So you can do freehand. You can do freehand open and freehand close. See how it it goes with the closed on it. So you can pretty much do anything that you want with it. And it's a whole lot of fun, especially if you are doing, you know, shading and art stuff like this, that you just want it to be random sort of thing. Isn't that cool? Um, I love digitizing like this. Dawn does it all the time as well. And it's a lot of fun. It is a whole lot of fun. So are there any questions so far? 
And if we switched everything around, this would be really good for videos. I also want to point out too that there's a nice container for the pen. It sits like this, which is great. It also is slightly magnetic, so it sits on the side. I also have a pen holder right at the top here. It only fits on the top, but because my monitor is in the way, I can't I can't use it. So now on all these Wacom ones, you open it up and open it up. Now you guys get to see me struggle. Anyways, inside are the extra nibs, which are this right at the end and different colors. So I don't think there's a trick to it. I just maybe think I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Anyways, so this has got some weight to it and it just sits here so you don't uh, lose your pen. I quite like it and I have it over on the side and it's perfect. So one more gadget to show you guys. Now I do use it for digitizing a little bit, but not as much as I use it for editing and photos and stuff. Now this is called a loop deck and it's pretty cool. You see a clock, but it's all dials. I do have some of it set. Do you see how that works? Isn't that awesome? I love it. All these you can program. These are also programming. So I have one here that says um, digitizing. I don't, I hit the wrong one. Please don't, please don't mess up my, there we go. I'm not gonna hit anything. So when I'm traveling, I can use the dials here. They also click to change. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Cool gadget, Sue. I know. I do use it a little bit, um, not as much. Here's all your control keys. It is massive to set this baby up, but I use it mostly for video stuff. So it's brilliant for that. So you can skip up along, you can do different things. It's easy. But like I said, I do have, I do have quite a bit set up already for um, um, the digitizing. So uh, a lot of people always ask, how, how hard is it to set up? So this is the software that comes with uh, the Cintiq and you guys can see it on the big screen. You don't need to worry about where my hands go in there. So it's a 24 P so you can set up the pen settings and it went to my top monitor, which doesn't usually bother me, but I'll bring it down so you guys can see it. So you can set up, it's called a pro pen too and you can put different applications in this area here beside all and you can make settings just for that software so if you know you're doing photoshop or something and you want different things that's what it does so this is the remote um oh yeah you can change like the pressure the back end is apparently an eraser. Of course, I don't really use that, but there's drop down um, things so you can pick what you want and you can calibrate it to make it work properly. So, so far, pretty darn easy, I think. So let's go to the remote and this is how you set it up. So. I know it looks complicated, but really you just pick what you want. So you want it to be, look at all the choices you have. Keyboard, tablet, navigation, applications. One of these buttons could open something. It can open your shortcuts, tons of things. So anything you can think of. I picked key, keystroke, opened it up, and I clicked on the backspace on my keyboard. And now that's what it is. So super easy. Now these are the outer keys 
And if we go to the inner keys, which is this strip here, down the middle, I don't know if you can see my mouse there, but mm, uh, then shift, alt, control, space, and ring keys. So that's that ring I was telling you. There is, this is touch, the middle part is touch, and the rest are buttons. So I've got a couple of repeat ones in here just because I find it a little difficult to get to it. Um, and you can also do on-screen shortcuts. I don't have any going on because I like the buttons. So isn't that cool? Easy, easy to um, change stuff around the way you want it. And I really like it. And there are settings for the Cintiq. See, you can see current pressure. See how that blue line goes up? So you can really get it how you want. So you can change the display settings and display toggle, so back and forth for different things. Um, I really like it. Lots of tutorials here for you. It's really um, easy to do. I really like it. And it's a lot of fun. So uh, it's called an EKR dash 100 remote. So I thought it was an eek remote. I thought that looked much better. So those are some of the things I use. It's a whole lot of fun. I really, really like the um, freehand. I think it's um, really fun. There we go, full thing. Uh, especially for the quilting. I find the quilting to be you know, really neat. You can do something like that. You can switch to your pointer and then right click and drag and you can put another one beside it. I mean, obviously this isn't a very nice shape. I don't have auto scroll on because I don't like it. It drives me crazy. I'm just as content to pan over using the buttons. Let me make this a bit uh, darker, I guess. No, nah, it's fine. So you can do all sorts of things and it's just like sitting at a desk for sure. So do you guys have any questions? This was a little bit behind the scenes of how I do it. And this is honestly how I do it. I have a lot of fun. Anything you can do with your mouse, it's all right here. It's all at the top and at the side. Could you do a step to step class on how to make patches in Merrily one day? I'm having trouble with it. Didn't I do, maybe it wasn't that thorough for the patches. It's like applique and the cover stitches are the Merrily. But yes, I can definitely do that. And we're going to do it with the Cintiq in the big screen, not the small screen or maybe just in the big screen, as long as you guys can deal with my hand being in the way. Any other questions or requests? Anything goes, if you have any questions about what I'm doing and how I do stuff, um, let me know. Most people ask me what software I use the most. And if I'm doing production for other business, I use Wilcom. Wilcom has been giving me a hard time lately, so I'm not very happy with it. Um, I do have Hatch as well, so I can kind of switch to that using the same native file form. Uh, there's issues apparently. Uh, Wilcom E4.5, they know about it, but my PES files are getting all messed up, which is just awesome. <laughs> Um, it's been driving me crazy. So, uh, but I use in brilliance just about every day. I think for being super creative, the pep software is my favorite. And of course, lace is on pep. Uh, you can do lace on any software. It's just particularly awesome on pep. Um, Susan may be talking about in brilliance merrily. Yes, she is. And that's why I answered her. It's done like applique, but the cover stitches are the merrily. 
which is awesome. It's a great stitch. There is, in Pep, there is also um, kind of a marrowing kind of stitch that you can use. We can go over that too. But yeah, I can put that on a list. So digitizing classes. What do you guys want to learn? So I can teach just about anything. Um, but I want it to be what you guys want because I want, there's no point in me doing videos if nobody's watching them, right? So I want you guys to tell me what you want. You know, I'm not really going to show you how to design a quilt or something like that. That's really involved, but we can do bigger projects, um, merely the patches that's a great subject. I love any digitizing. Okay, I mean, that's fair enough. So any digitizing. I do love the series that we did with uh, Digitizing After Dark, Sunset with Sue, um, and, and it's fun. Perhaps a demo on how to digitize a patch and create a Merrily Type Edge. Create... It's a stitch type, so I don't know if I could create my own, but you know what? That's um, that's something. Applique hints and tips would be cool. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, there's a lot to creating applique, and don't forget the get out of jail free card, which is the zigzag stitches. So, and I don't necessarily use underlay because I find that they're a bit too wide. And if anything's moving, then it messes up and shows. And you really don't want that. So think about it, guys. I'd like to hear your suggestions so I can set up, you know, kind of a schedule. So whoever's watching this later, um, you can you can do that. And we will be doing them on this so you guys can see how I roll. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So um, whatever you guys want to see, different stitches being created, motifs. I love motifs. How to create, digitize a mug rug. Yep. Dis digitize a collection, for example, jackets or sleeves. Yep. That would be cool. Great ideas. Keep them coming. Motifs, I know. I love motifs. I I have an old Embered video on it, but I don't have anything more current than that. Uh, maybe take a photo and turn it into an applique. I have a hatch series. Now, if you don't have hatch, don't worry. It's all basic stuff where I took a picture and it's flowers and I made it into like five different design ways. And that should be something that everybody watches. So the idea of it is instead of using, you know, other people's designs, you can go and take a picture and you can make it into an applique. You can make it into, I did one with shading. It's really good and you can apply it to your software. So it's under Hatch and it was classes, so official classes, and it's a fantastic video. You guys will love it, and you can do so much with it, right? Everyone create their own logo. Oh, that's a good idea. That's fun. We can play around with lettering, too. Uh, make your own kind of style of monograms. I think that would be a whole lot of fun. So spelling... Now I'm not going to digitize anything to do with spelling. You guys can figure that out, right? Let's see. I don't have this memorized yet. Yep, I did it. See how handy this thing is? So I'm just uh, clicking on it and then clicking my button just to delete everything. I really like the zoom function. I think that's so awesome for sure. And I'm pretty sure the first... The first part right here is pan. Yep, pan. So you can pan and then you can uh, zoom. Yeah, I love it. A little bit easier with it sitting down. It pretty much stays there. So 
Carol, hi. Oh, you misspelled. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I didn't catch it. And brilliance, merrily, please. I'd love to do that. I think the merrily is um, absolutely fantastic. I do have a marrow machine that I really hate and it really hates me. <laughs> We're not using merrily, but I compared to, um, um, I compared it and it's pretty darn good. So that's all I'm going to say. So Cindy King, are you just pointing to your computer screen? Uh, no, this is, this is my Cintiq. So it's my tablet that's also a monitor. And I was showing I can draw in stitches, which is really neat. So I have the pen and I just draw. You can draw whatever you want. And I've really had a lot of fun doing this with uh, quilting stitches. So awesome. Since several of us own and brilliant stitch artists, I have an affiliate link, by the way, that really helps out. So if you guys are um, getting um, in brilliance, make sure you use my link, please. Yes. Shameless plug. Um, favorite features. One of the things I love about in brilliance, and this is going to sound weird, but I am weird. Um, you can always rely on it. No matter what, in Brilliance works. It works for sending to my machine. It works for anything you want to digitize. It works on Mac and PC. I personally work on both uh, Mac and PC, and I thoroughly enjoy that it works the same on both and that it uh, is native to Mac. I think that is the best part about it. I know a lot of uh, software works on Mac, but this is native to Mac. So it's pretty cool. So Cindy King, I'm just writing. Let's write, I can print Cindy King. There you go. Go back and do a circle. You got to remember you can't do stuff too small, right? Because you can only go as small as your stitches. Isn't that fun though? So you could get one of your kids to write something or draw something and um, then you can have it. You don't have to do anything more. Just send it to your machine. And just like anything else, you can change colors and do more. I'm just doing a doodle design. I could doodle all day. And I haven't yet, but I could. Just going through all the colors, making an eight. Isn't that cool? I think it's really cool. It's fun. It looks better on my screen, but uh, we'll change it over so you guys can see everything better. So are there any questions? Keep coming up with ideas because I don't know where to start. Um, and I want to do stuff that you guys want to learn about or see or anything like that. Um, in Brilliance, I would absolutely love to work in In Brilliance and show you guys, uh, especially the Merrily, but any of it, it's awesome. The other thing I like about In Brilliance is it has AccuQuilt in it. It's an add-on and it's the only one that has it. And it's awesome. It's awesome. So... I think that is all I wanted to show you guys. Um, I'm sorry the screen is a bit small there, but I will um, make it bigger. Can one freehand draw in and brilliant stitch artist? Let's give it a try next uh, class. Let's do it. Let's see how well it works. Um, I usually do it in Wilcom, but... Uh, I haven't tried too many others. I just happen to really like the way it works. But then again, like I told you, I am not happy with it right now because it's messing up my software or my PES. So let's see. Bye. Bye. I forgot the E there. I'd have to move that. You can see 
that it comes up as little lines too. <laughs> but that's okay. Just group everything. So to all our American gang members, I'd like to say happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful Thanksgiving with your family and time off. And now you guys will know what to expect for classes, that it's going to look completely different, but it is actually the same. I would love to learn more in brilliance. Awesome. I'm so happy with that. I, I would be happy to do that every Wednesday. We can bring back the digitizing after dark and do some really cool stuff. So awesome. If you guys think of anything, leave it in the comment and it's excellent. So happy Thanksgiving again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.